Hi, this is Ms. Fitzmaurice. This video is an explanation of the problem on page 21 of your Unit 8 packet. This was the 1998 M2 problem. So, a space shuttle astronaut is in circular orbit around the Earth and has an assembly consisting of two small dense spheres each with mass m, whose centers are connected by a rigid rod of length l, which has negligible mass. Okay, um, initially this is free-floating at rest, and the astronauts launch a clay lump so that it hits perpendicularly as the midpoint. We want to know the kinetic energy of the system after the collision, and the kinetic energy as a result of the collision, or the change in as a result in the collision. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to draw a before and after picture. Okay, so we have the thing, we have the before picture really drawn for us. The after picture, our other lump, sticks to our surface and then they kind of all move off together. Okay, between those two pictures I want you to decide is energy conserved, is momentum conserved, is angular momentum conserved. Okay, and the answer is that between these two pictures only momentum is going to be conserved. So we have sigma p naught is equal to sigma P. Um, at the beginning, only this ball is moving, so we have m v naught, and at the end, we have 3m all stuck together, right? Our m here, this, and this, they're all stuck together, so we have 3m, and they're kind of all moving together as one object, times vf. Now, to solve for Vf, we can cancel out our m's, and we divide by 3 to get Vf is equal to V0 over 3. Now, we can find the kinetic energy after the collision. So, kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. We know the total mass is 3m, and our velocity is v0 over 3 squared, so we have, <clears throat> and this should be 1 half, that was a mistake, we have 1 half times 3m times v0 over 3 squared, okay, we end up with One sixth m v naught squared. Okay, so that was part I. In the second part of part A, it says determine the change in kinetic energy. So delta k is going to be k minus k naught. Initially, we had just the little ball moving, so we had 1 half mv squared. Okay, and we know that at the end we had 1 half mv naught squared. Or sorry, 1 sixth mv naught squared. So 1 sixth minus 1 half is negative one-third, so our change in kinetic energy is negative one-third m v naught squared. Alright, in part b it says the assembly is brought to rest, the clay lump is removed, and the experiment is repeated as shown above. So, First, we want to determine the distance from the left end of the rod to the center of mass immediately after the collision. So I'm going to draw that picture. Okay, I have mass m and a distance l away 
these two things stuck together. And so we have 2m, and we have L, and we have M. Okay, and it says from the left rod, so we're setting that place as our distance equals zero or x equals zero. So we're going to use our center of mass equation, and we know that xcm is equal to all of the masses times their positions divided by all of the masses. Okay, so we know, of course, our total mass, sigma m, is 3m. And so we have xcm is equal to, and I'm going to name my masses, a, b, and c, ma, xa, plus mb, xb, plus mc, xc, all over 3m. Of course, xa is 0, so ma xa goes away. And we have xcm is equal to m times l plus m times L because those are the positions XC and XB. They're a distance L away from our X equals zero mark divided by 3M. Now every single term has an M so our M's will cancel out and we have the center of mass is equal to 2L over 3. Okay, in the second part, we want to know the direction of motion of the center of mass directly. So, because momentum is conserved, there's no outside force, the center of mass, which is going to be about here, has to be moving in the same initial direction as our original mass. Okay, we know that initially um, Vx was zero or px was equal to zero, there was no x momentum, and so at the end, for our center of mass, px still has to be zero. Um, in part three, they want us to find the speed of the center of mass immediately after the collision. And so to do that, we're going to use conservation of momentum. So we're using sigma p naught equals sigma p. And we know that at the beginning, we just have m v naught from the one object that's moving. At the end, now the mass is 3m. And we have v funnel. So v funnel or the velocity of the center of mass will actually be what we solve for in part A. It will be V naught over 3. Okay, so that was part 3. Um, in part 4, we want to find the angular speed of the system immediately after the collision. And so, since there's no net outside torque, we can say that angular momentum is conserved. Sigma L naught is equal to sigma L. And so we need to be able to find the angular momentum before and after the collision. And of course, when we're dealing with angular momentum, we need to specify about what point. Okay, and it's traditional to look at the center of mass. You don't have to. Your calculations will still be valid. But let's look at the center of mass. So taking the idea that we're using sigma L naught equals sigma L, let's look back at the picture. So this is our before picture. And remember that afterwards, 
we have these three things stuck together. And initially, only this guy has any angular momentum. And because angular momentum is conserved through this whole process, instead of thinking about its angular momentum somewhere out here, let's think about it when it's right at the other mass. Okay, so by the time it gets right there, and we're comparing it to the center of mass. Okay, so the distance between it and the center of mass is L over 3. And I'm having trouble L over 3. Okay, so when our object is right here at the beginning, the angular momentum, or sigma L naught, is going to be I of this ball times omega. Now we know that in general V equals omega R so R omega equals V over R and we have a point mass so I is MR squared so we have sigma L naught is equal to M R R is L over 3 because that's the distance between our object and the center of mass. So we have m l over 3 squared times v over, and our r is l over 3. And so we have initially m, one of our l's will cancel. We bring this three up to the top and so we have again one of our threes will cancel and we have m times three sorry m over three v l okay so that's l naught At the end, you know, we still just have one object, but it's going to have a kind of complicated I. Okay, and we want to know I with respect to the center of mass. Okay, so the radius for the left blob is 2 o over 3. And for the two right blobs, the radius is just L over 3. And so at the end, if we're calculating sigma i, or sigma l, we have, again, i and the final omega, and this is all initial. So our final in omega and our final i will account for all three objects moving together. And so our i will be m l over 3 squared okay for each ball on the right hand side but there's two of them so I'm gonna put a 2m in front of that plus m and this is for the right hand or sorry the left hand ball times 2l over 3 squared times omega and that's what we want to solve for so first I'm going to say I know that my final momentum is equal to my initials so I'm going to say m v naught l over 3 is equal to everything on the right hand side okay and I notice every term has an M, so I'm going to get rid of my M's. And every term has at least one L, so I'm going to get rid of one of my L's. Okay, so this L squared, the squared will still apply to the threes on the bottom, but not to the L. Okay, so I have V naught over 3 is equal to 
2L over 3 plus 4L, because the 4 was squared, over 9, and this should also be over 9, omega. Okay, 2 plus 4 is 6, so I have V0 over 3 equals 6 ninths L omega. Of course, this fraction reduces to 2 thirds. Then my 3's will cancel out. And so I solve for omega, and I end up with omega is equal to v naught over 2L. Alright, finally in part 5 they want the change in kinetic energy of as a result of the collision. Okay, so we're doing change in kinetic energy is final minus initial. Okay, we know initial is 1 half m v naught squared, and the final will be one half i omega squared. Okay, we know from part four that omega is v naught over two l, so we're going to put that in for omega v naught over two l squared. And we also know that I will be all of this. So it's 2 m l squared over 3 plus m times 2 l over 3 squared, which really reduces to be 2 thirds m l squared. So if you don't believe me, check the algebra, but this i ends up being 2 thirds m l squared. All right, and now all we have to do is calculate, cancel out as many l's as we possibly can. Um, so these twos will cancel out. Okay, one of our l's will cancel, or actually both of our L's will cancel if we remember that the squared applies both to the 2 and the L and the V0. So then both of our L's cancel out and we're left with V0 squared and we still have our M and on, in the denominator, we have 3 times 4, which is 12. So we have 1 12th v naught squared minus 1 half m v naught squared, which is negative 5 twelfths m v naught squared. So our change in kinetic energy is negative, um, and this makes sense because energy should have been lost as heat in the collision.